It begins before you're even born and lasts all your life. There's no other motor known to man that even comes close. It beats 2.5 billion times in an average lifetime. The human heart is truly remarkable. Unfortunately, heart disease remains the leading cause of death worldwide. At the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute, we have been fighting heart disease for over 25 years. It all started with Victor Chang himself, a gifted doctor and a true pioneer in heart transplantation. Dr Chang personally saved hundreds of lives, but he knew that millions of lives could be saved through medical research. Really great research, I always say, is research that allows you for the first time to imagine the unimaginable. And that's the sort of research we've tried to push here since we started the Institute. Heart disease doesn't discriminate. So it's not just those overweight people or smokers in the community that are affected by heart disease. It affects every one of us. And that's what makes this research so important. So when we started the Institute, we were fortunate to make a, a tremendous discovery. We started with a bang with this discovery. It was really about setting that bar as high as possible, and that's really been the standard that all of us have tried to achieve throughout the 25 years of the Institute. A lot of people in Australia would know what plaque buildup is. Unfortunately, I think what people don't know is that not all plaque are equal. Our discovery is that we have developed a tool that can distinguish unstable from stable plaque. Just as importantly as that is also developed a potential treatment that will help stabilise these plaques and, re and reduce the inflammation. So Roland Stocker and his team have made one of the most incredible breakthroughs in our understanding of what it is that makes some people more susceptible to having a heart attack. Look, I, I think the major advance we've made uh, is with the, our ability now to recover hearts that would otherwise not be deemed transplantable. Now that accounts for one third of all deceased donors in Australia. Now until we carried out the research, it was thought that these hearts were too severely damaged for them to work if you tried to transplant them into another individual. I really admire Peter McDonald. He is so passionate about doing the right thing for his patients. When I was finally told that I needed a heart transplant, oh, that's when it all sunk in. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the best feeling in the world. We could take them out, put them on a machine, the so-called heart in a box, and we can tell then whether these hearts will work if you then transplant them. To so have it taken out and then put on a machine and see it start to recover on the machine, yeah, it's a sort of spooky and uh, amazing experience. <laughs> This building's my building. I love this building. The only thing in this entire building that scares me to death is the zebrafish. The zebrafish is a remarkable animal. It's one of the few animals that is able to actually regenerate its heart following an injury. This tiny little tropical fish, they're wonderful creatures because when they're uh, still juvenile, they're completely transparent. So you can actually watch the heart and blood vessels develop. Their genomes are very similar to ours, and interestingly, their heart functions in a very similar way to our human heart. Well, we discovered, first of all, that we can successfully view the heart of a fish, which is the size of a grain of rice. So a tiny, tiny little thing, we could see it on a big screen and study its, its intricate function. You just imagine what that would mean if we could do that in humans. If we could take patients who'd had a heart attack, and rather than being left with scar, we could actually regenerate that heart and restore that heart back to normal. When I was diagnosed with a SCAD heart attack, uh, I was told to avoid lifting, exercise, anything physically strenuous for six weeks. I had a two-year-old at the time who was in a pram, who was in a bath. I couldn't lift him. It was tough. 
So we don't know much about SCAD, we do know two things. It's almost definitely got a hormonal component, and that's why it's more common in women, and it's got a genetic component. It is very scary for the women who get SCAD because they're totally unexpecting to have it. And a lot of the time when the women go to the hospital, they are underdiagnosed because they don't have the typical risk factors. And so sometimes they are sent home. Since my heart attack, uh, Bob and the amazing team at the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute have started a SCAD study, which is a game changer for people like me. So Diane Fatkin and her team have spent the last 20 years hunting down the genes that cause inherited defects in how the heart works. Well, as part of Diane's work, we um, worked with a large family, three generations, 50 family members, in which several members had really severe heart failure, so severe that they were on the, on the list to receive a heart transplant. We were able to show what the gene mutations did in terms of altering heart function. And then this led to a direct change of management where rather than treating these patients with standard heart failure therapy, we gave them a drug that would not normally be used in that situation that reversed the fundamental abnormality and cured the patients. Diane's fantastic because she has something that's very important for an institute such as ours. She's a cardiologist and she does basic research. And I, you know, I, wish, I wish I had that medical training because it brings you so much closer to asking the right questions. Sally has been at the Institute for nearly 20 years. She made this most amazing discovery, which was after more than 10 years of work. And that's a discovery that is actually going to impact on millions of babies and pregnancies all around the world. She works in genetics just like I do, works with kids with congenital heart disease and tries to find that needle in the haystack that causes babies to be born with a heart defect. We showed that a deficiency in a particular molecule, a vital molecule called NAD, uh, caused the baby's heart and other organs not to form properly. In, in identifying this new cause of birth defects and showing in experiments that vitamin B3 could prevent birth defects from occurring, the, the impact could be huge. Personally, I think Sally's a wonderful role model for women in science. To see a woman that has made so many breakthroughs and been able to contribute in a real way to heart disease and congenital defects is a really amazing thing. Yes, I think uh, if you ask me what motivates people, what why, why do really smart people want to work in this institute? Um, firstly, I like to think that we have a nice collegial atmosphere and we help each other. But what drives all of us, after all, is curiosity. The mountain's there to be climbed and we like getting to the top. With the Innovation Centre, we're going to be able to move from just studying one patient sample a day to being able to study whole populations of patient samples every day. This has allowed us to do work that we could never do before. It keeps us uh, at the cutting edge of technology. One of the brilliant things about working here at the Institute is that we are surrounded by really smart, really dedicated people. It's, it's an honour to be working with such people and, and working with them day in, day out, year in, year out. It's fantastic. I think the most important thing to realise about science is that it is a real team effort. And I like to think that science and what we're doing is like a puzzle but I don't think we are the only ones that contribute. It really comes down to people like you, public donations that help us allow us to complete this. I always think of it as an investment and not a donation because what you're doing is empowering the researchers to essentially find the discoveries which will then have not just the social impact in terms of the uh, burden of disease, but also the financial impact as well. Soon after you're born, heart muscle cells lose their ability to divide and make new cells. So if you have an injury to heart, as occurs in a heart attack, you can't properly repair that. If we could regenerate and rejuvenate these remaining cells so they can now divide and make new cells, we could get proper repair of the heart without any scar. So that's the holy grail. It's been an incredible 25 years for the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute. It's a moment in time worth celebrating. But we know we've got even bigger and better breakthroughs to make. We remain curious, determined and tirelessly focused on what we can achieve together. Disease doesn't stop, so I don't think that allows us to stop. I think that the day we don't have disease is the day that all of us can um, pack up at 5pm and go home. <laughs>